Now, I actually had a student show this reaction to me because they posted it to a discussion board discussing the solution to a particular post I'd given, and I wrote back saying, I've never heard of this before, so I'm going to take all credit unless you can show me a link. And they actually sent me a link. So kudos to the student link for teaching me a new reaction. So we've talked about thionyl chloride SOCl2 as a way to replace alcohols and to do so stereospecifically. And this is kind of a nice reaction for two reasons. First of all, is that it is stereospecific. We get a racemic, we don't get a racemic mixture when we're done. We get it in an enantomerically pure product. But if we were to do SOCl2 on this compound, we would get inversion of symmetry with halide substitution. Cool, right? And we can also do this on primary alcohols, which makes it a very versatile reaction because it means that we don't have to worry about SN2 or SN1, SN2 rearrangements or the sluggishness of, or sorry, SN1 rearrangements or the sluggishness of an SN2 reaction. But there's actually another reagent we can use, which is POCl3. And this is going to give us the exact same outcome. Now, I haven't found very good resources for saying which one to use over the other. My guess is that POCl3 is a slower reagent. So since phosphorus is bigger than sulfur, it's probably a slower reagent, but much more water stable, making it a more practical reagent, albeit a more sluggish reagent. But if you're looking for a way to replace the alcohol with chlorine, POCl3 is also an option for this type of reaction. Again, we're going to get the same inversion of symmetry and we get the advantage that if, particularly if you're working with primary alcohols, we're not going to have to make this trade-off between possibilities of rearrangement and sluggishness. This is basically going to be a fast way to do these types of conversions with a great deal of stereospecificity.